Hello, uh, what I'm going to show you today, and I've told you that I'm going to show you this for quite a while, is the way that I cook my butternut squash. Now this is one of my butternut squash. Um, I've been gradually using them, um, but I've still got quite a few down in the greenhouse. Um, I have used my largest one already. Um, but there are lots of different ways that you can cook these. Um, you can either just um, cook them whole if you wanted to, just wrap them in foil and put them in the oven whole. They will take a, a couple of hours if you do it like that. You could also cut them in half. Um, and put them in um, in the oven like that and they would take about an hour but the way that I do it is I cut it up into chunks um, and I will show you that because to me that's one of the nicest ways of having it um, because then the chunks stay in one piece and um, if you sort of cook it whole or in half it's, if you want to sort of puree it up, that's the way to go. But if you want to keep it sort of chunky, then I will show you how I roast my butternut squash. It's so much better to roast a load of vegetables. that It brings out the flavour so much more. So let me show you how I cook my butternut squash. Okay, so what you need, obviously, is your butternut squash. You need a decent peeler and you need a very good knife and a spoon. Now I've tried all sorts of peelers um, trying to peel the skin off. I find this is the best one. Um, do be careful of your fingers. These are very easy to pick up but do be careful of your fingers because the blade is actually quite sharp and it will, um, and I've done this several times, taken off a chunk of my nail. Um, so start at the top and hold the butternut squash firmly and just bring it down like this okay and just work all the way around we're going to cook all of this a decent sized butternut squash uh, is usually enough for four people okay so work your way around if there are any sections that you miss off just gently go over it again and um, it, it doesn't matter okay if you do miss some bits off because you can always go back so I'll just carry on um, peeling this and I will come back to you in a second. Be careful because when you get round to this section it actually gets quite slippery so um, just be careful when you're when you're peeling it and you're holding it okay. So I'll just carry on peeling this and I will be back with you in a sec. Okay, so the butternut squash is all done. There's a tiny little bit of skin on the top and a tiny little bit on the bottom, but don't worry about that because uh, you're gonna be cutting that off. Now you need to get your sharpest knife, mind your fingers, because butternut squash, cutting through a butternut squash is very hard. So just take the top off and then take the bottom off as well. If you take the bottom off, it then gives you a nice firm little bit, a little sort of area to stand it on which is very level. Now it's entirely up to you, if the top of your butternut squash is long you can cut it off here and chop up the top bit first. If it's sort of middly size and you feel okay about doing the whole thing just cut straight down the middle making sure you keep your fingers well out of the way. As long as you've got a big sharp knife it should go down quite easily. So we'll open it up and that is what it looks like inside. Now the next thing we need to do is to scoop out the seeds. Now these seeds you can save. So just scoop out all the, all the seeds in there. What you can do if you want, is to save these seeds. There's loads of them in here. What I would suggest you do, if you want to grow some more next year, is collect them all, give them a good wash um, under some cold water, and then that will get all the sort of the gunky stuff off. 
um, all the strands and everything else and then put these on kitchen towel to dry for a few days not all the seeds are viable what we mean by viable is um, if it's viable it will grow again if it's not viable it won't grow the way to tell whether a seed is viable is when it's dried oops sorry <laughs> they're very slippery if you get hold of a seed and push it gently it's much easier to do when they're dry if if it doesn't feel like there's anything in there then it's not viable and get rid of it if it feels firm inside then uh, it is it will be a viable seed and you can save it okay but I'll just push these to one side for the time being I'll scoop out the rest I'll just show you this one half because then I'll, I'll do the other half um, in a sec so we need to cut this into sort of about inch cubes so rest it on the the flat side so it won't go wobbling all over the place and cut it again down the middle obviously it just depends what size your butternut squash is to how far down you'll cut it now the top bit is smaller than the bottom bit so I'm going to cut the top bit off and just cut that bit in half so that's about an inch cube you might think that that looks a bit big at the moment but believe me when you've cooked it it actually shrinks down a little bit so I'm going to put those bits in a bowl I'm then going to cut this section in half again now this can be quite tricky because obviously there's no firm side and then I'll cut each of those bits in half so I've got six there and then I'll just cut this bit again be very very careful with the knife I know I keep saying that but please do so that's one half done I'm just going to do the other half and then I will come back to you in a sec right so there's all our butternut squash in there now before we cook it there are um, some things we need to do we need to put on some olive oil a couple of tablespoons a good amount of pepper and a good amount of salt however much the more pepper you put on there the warmer it gets so it's entirely up to you how much pepper you put on there but I would suggest about half a teaspoon of each okay and then all we need to do is to get in the bowl with our hands and just to mix it around very very gently so that we can make sure that every piece of butternut squash has got a little bit of salt a little bit of pepper and a little bit of olive oil in it it's easier doing it in a bowl like this than it is doing it on the tray and then what we need to do finally is we need to get just a baking tray and just empty it all on there make sure that you get all the bits of oil and anything else that was in the bowl and just make sure that you spread it out so that it's nice and even you don't want too much on the tray if you've got too much on the tray it won't roast it'll steam so make sure that the tray is just the right size and then what we need to do now is to put that in the oven and I'll tell you what temperature and how long for okay now I'm going to put this in the oven gas mark 5 or 190 or whatever the other one is I don't do that one I just do gas mark and uh, and 190 but you can work it out um, for about 30 to 40 minutes um, if you're cooking something else in the oven which is at a slightly lower temperature it just means that your butternut squash will take slightly longer to cook halfway through the cooking take the tray out just turn it over and then pop it back in the oven so I'm going to put this in at gas mark 5 on the shelf that's in the middle of the oven for 30 minutes 
I will go to start with. I will look at it after 15, turn it over and then put it back in for another 15. You know when it's done because you start to get little brown bits um, across the top. It looks like it's, it's roasting and caramelizing in there because the sugars from the vegetables, vegetables will start to caramelize in the oven. And also if you put a knife in the butternut squash, it goes in very, very easily and that means it's done. If there's resistance when you put a knife in, it needs a little bit longer. So I'll put it in for 15 minutes and then I'll come back to you then. Right, well they've been in the oven for 15 minutes. I'm just gonna get the, uh, the spatula in and just turn them over so that you can, hopefully, can you see that? They've just started to roast here. So they're, when I opened the oven door, they were sizzling. So just turn them over as best you can. Make sure they're again in one layer and then I'll put them in for another 15 minutes. Right, this has been in for another 15 minutes. So it's been in for half an hour in total. It feels like it's done. Just loosen it off very, very carefully. If you're too um, forceful with it, it'll actually break down. Uh, and the, the chunks will break apart. So get the knife, if you just want to test, just put it in. If it goes in nice and easily like this one is, it means it's done. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll put it on uh, in a dish and then we'll um, put something special across the top. Okay, so we'll just put it in this white dish. You can obviously always put it just straight on the plate, but white makes food look so much nicer, I think. Okay, so we'll just put it in there, just like that. You can see it's lovely and hot. And if you just take that to the table, then that's always, it just always looks lovely. Now the only other thing I'm going to add to the top of it is some parsley. So I'll show you how to cut that. Now I actually um, got this idea of decorating it with some parsley on top from um, the American chef, uh, the Barefoot Contessa. And it does, it just looks lovely. Now this is parsley from my garden, so just take off the nice bits at the top. The stalks you can actually use um, if you're making, um, say, a, a vegetable stock or something like that, because they've got loads of flavour in them. Just get a lovely, a lovely big bunch of uh, parsley, or if you want to use coriander, or chives actually go really well with it. And you just need to chop it up just roughly okay we don't want it too small we want some nice big chunky bits of parsley in there this is um curly parsley but you can use flat leaf parsley anything with a green edge will just look nice okay i think that will do and then all you need to do is to just sprinkle some on the top and it just lifts the, the color of the butternut squash on the white uh, in the white bowl and I think that looks lovely. Well I hope you found that interesting. Um, we will have this uh, for dinner tonight but I might just have to try some because it's really nice. Um, some people don't like butternut squash because they say it tastes very sweet. Um, it's you either love it or you hate it it will grow on you I mean as a family we absolutely adore it we think it's really really nice and roasting it is just so much better than anything else in fact any vegetable can really be roasted I've not tried roasting peas though I don't think peas would work but you know anything else Brussels sprouts and broccoli is really nice roasted so I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to eat some of this because it's really nice. But I hope you found that interesting. I hope you give it a go and I shall see you very soon. Bye bye.